we're going to now continue on our discussion of the for loop and start building up structures that are a little more complicated. We're going to do it very slowly. Um, and so during this entire process, I encourage you to keep in track, uh, to, to keep in mind um, the exercise of tracing through loops on a piece of paper like we did before. And if at any point anything is confusing, I think it's a really good idea to go back to that method and see if you can keep track of everything that's happening. So being able to do that on a piece of paper is going to really help you sort of keep track in your mind later on, even if you're not writing it down, of what's happening logically as you go through the lines of code one by one. Okay. So now we're going to try um, a slightly a slightly more complicated example. Okay, so let's say that I'm going to do exactly what I wanted to do um, wanted to do last time, uh, which is this exercise of adding up a bunch of numbers, right? But now I'm going to abstract a bit further and, and introduce the concept of indices back in, right? So let's say uh, that I have um, a, a vector of numbers, um, and it's going to be um, let's say I'm going to count from ten to 50, and I'm going to count them by fives. OK? So if I execute that, and I say ren, right, I can check on the values of a, right? So a is um, now the numbers between 10 and, and 50 counting by fives. OK? So what I'm going to do now is I want to know what are the squares of each of these numbers that are in A right now. So what I'm going to do is um, go through them in a for loop one by one, square them, and then keep track of that information somewhere else. OK? So I'm going to make another, initialize another variable that I'm going to call A squared. And it's going to be a bunch of zeros that's going to be the same size as A. I have to be a big A here. Here we go. All right, so let's run that and see what we got so far. Right, so I ran the script again. We have a, which is exactly the same as before, and I have a squared, which currently is just a bunch of zeros that's exactly the same size as a. So a has is 1 by 9, so a squared is also 1 by 9. So this is good, right? So next what I'm going to do is go through uh, and say 4, and i I'm going to use as my index. That's the thing that's going to count up, right? I'm going to say a i for i equals, I'm going to count through all of the elements of a. Okay, so I'm going to count from 1, which is the first element of a, to whatever the last element of a is. So now it's from 1 to the length of a. Okay, and I'm going to say a squared of i equals the ith element of a squared, like so and end. Remember, you always have to end. Okay? So, so let's see what's happening here, right? You're going to execute this loop, and every time you execute the loop, the value of a is going to increase, of i is going to increase. So a is not changing, right? So now I've dissociated the list of numbers that I want to square from the loop where I'm going to go in and square them, right? So there's i, which is just the index of where we are, right? So a is this big thing up here, right? Um, and it has these nine elements. And it's going to be 10, 15, 20, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so now I'm going to have an i, which is simply the pointer of where we are right now. So I'm going to say i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 3, 1 until the length of a. And the length of a in this point is 9, because it has, uh, it has 9 columns in a. Okay. Now, every time I go into the loop, i takes on a value between 1 and 9. So I'm going to look up the ith number in a, the ith element of a, square it, and assign that value to the ith element of a squared. So what I have here is, in the initialization process, I made another vector that's going to be the same size as a, right? Initially, they're going to be filled with zeros, like we see down there, right? What I'm going to do is go through the loop one at a time and assign the square of whatever is up here and put it down here. Okay? So when i equals 1, or if we're going to trace through this, I'm not going to write down the full chart, but you can do it by yourself if you, if you need to, is that say, so the first thing that happens is that i equals 1, right? a of i, which is a of 1, is 100. 100 squared is, oh, I'm sorry, 10. <laughs> 10 squared is 100, right? And so 100 gets assigned to a squared of i, which is the a squared of 1 here, 
right? So this becomes 100. And next, i becomes 2. So we're going to take the square of, one, of 15 and put it here. And then we're going to take the square of 20 and put it here, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we can now run the script like so and examine what we've got. So let's, just for good measure, make sure that a is the same, right? So this confirms that nothing about a has changed. a is exactly the value it was when we assigned it um, the value in line 1. And uh, before, we had a squared, which is all zeros. And now it's no longer all zeros. Now it has numbers that are not 0. And they correspond to the squares of every element in a. Right? And the way we've done it, so this is really important, right? is that I'm guaranteeing that a is going to be the same size as, as, uh, as a squared. Right? So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. Every element of a squared is, is the square of the, element, of the same element in a. Right? And by going through it this way, right, this piece of code is relatively general. Right? Now what we can do is that I can make a anything I want. Right? I can make a from negative 1 to 1 counting by 0 0.02, 0 0.02, right? So that all I've changed, OK? And if I run this, OK, A, let's say what is the size of A now? A now has 101 elements in it of numbers between negative 1 and 1. And just to confirm, the size of A squared is the same, which is good, right? And if I make a figure and plot a by a squared, squared, if I can spell that. Great. And here's the plot, right? So on the horizontal axis is a. On the vertical axis is a squared. And you can see that it's exactly what you expect, which is a parabola around the origin, 0, 0 there. And that's, that's great. That's exactly what we expected. And the strength of doing it this way is uh, it, it seems a little convoluted, right? Because you could have just put in a equals whatever you want it to be here. But then every time you changed it to do something else, you would have to change your loop. And so I'm trying to avoid doing that. This is a way of abstracting it by using indices so that I don't have to change the actual logical structure of what's happening. All I have to do is change the inputs to it. Right? I needed to do something quite different just by changing line 1 by assigning it a different input of what the vector is I'm trying to square. 